All right. Good evening, everyone. I know we're just before time, but I wanted to get this started to make sure it's working because I know we had some issues um, with that before. Is it good if I stand right here, Dave, or is that a little Looks too good. close or too far away? Or Looks good? perfect. All right. Um, it's a blessing to be back. I know it's been a crazy week and a crazy couple of weeks, and we're still, you know, every day kind of dealing with the the changes that are happening, including the safer at home order that happened this week in Wisconsin. Um, but our grace stays the same. So I'm glad that you guys are tuning in and hopefully we're getting a couple more people coming on live as this video has now been posted. I figured that one thing I would do as we wait for um, a couple more to get online um, is I will sing one of the hymns that we would have done tonight for our midweek worship. Um, it's called, Now the Light Has Gone Away. It's one of my favorite hymns because it was one of the ones that my parents sang with me when I was little. And it is kind of like a lullaby, but it's also reminding you of all the beautiful truths that um, you have when you go to bed and you know that you don't need to be afraid of the dark, you don't need to be afraid about what happened today, you don't need to be afraid about what's coming tomorrow. Because... While the sun maybe, maybe has gone down, the sun of your life, the sun of God, has not. Um, he is still just as much rising in your life as he, as he has ever since he rose from the dead. So, hear the words of Now the Light Has Gone Away as I wait for more people to tune in, and then we'll, we will start our short meditation and devotion for this evening. Now the light has gone away, Father, listen while I pray, asking you to watch and keep, and to send me quiet sleep. Jesus, Savior, wash away all that I've done wrong today. Make me ever more like you, good and gentle, kind and true. Let my near and dear ones be safe with you eternally. Oh, bring me and all I love to your happy home above. Now my evening praise I give you once died that I might live. All your precious gifts are free. Oh, how good you are to me. Ah, my best and kindest friend, you will love me to the end. Let me love you more and more. Always better than before. Amen. If you're just joining us, that is the first hymn that we would have done tonight if you would have all been gathered here with me at St. Paul. But I'm praying that all of you who are gathered with us now at this live moment, but also later on watching this video, that you are gathered with us in the Spirit. Not just our Spirit, but in the Holy Spirit. God tells us wherever two or three gather together in his name, there he is with us. And we are sure that God is with us tonight. And we are blessed with his presence. We're blessed to hear his word. And we're blessed to have the comfort and assurance that his word brings to us. No matter what's going on in the world around us, let us never forget the importance of what we already have in Christ. It's part of the reason for our meditation this evening. For our devotion tonight, um, I will be reading a short liturgy for us tonight, and I will not be reading the Passion History tonight myself, but I have posted that Passion History for you on our website, as well as the bulletin that has the full liturgy um, of which we'll be taking some of tonight. So if you would like to follow along, please go to our website at www dot stpaulclintonville 
www.stpaulclintonville.com. That's www.stpaulclintonville.com. There you will find on the main page, if you just scroll down a little bit, there will be a box that says updates. Just under that is online resources. And then you'll see the date and then the link for the bulletin and the Passion History. So if you would like to read that at home, and I'd encourage you to do that with your family, please go to the website, find that materials there. And if you'd like to follow along with the liturgy at home, click on that link on our website. All right, let's begin. In the name of our God, to whom all hearts are open and from whom no secrets are hidden. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy, and in your faithfulness come to my relief. Do not bring your servant into judgment, for no one living is righteous before you. Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. And we confess our sins. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and repentant sinner, confess that I have sinned against you in my thoughts, my words, and my actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I am distressed by the sins that trouble me, and am deeply sorry for them. And will give us a moment of silence for a private confession. Jesus says to his people, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. His death paid for the guilt of your sins and for the sins of the whole world. Do you believe this? And if you do, answer. Yes, yes I believe. I believe. Because of the promise of our Savior Jesus, I forgive you all your sins. Be assured that you are a dear child of God and an heir of eternal life. We pray. Lord God, we thank you for this day of grace now drawing to a close. Stay with us and warm our hearts with your forgiving love in Christ. May your word keep our faith burning brightly, that we may walk in the light of your presence through the darkness of this world. Come and bless us as we worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And if you're looking at the bulletin, we're going to jump right ahead to our sermon and our sermon text. As I said, if you're at home, and I would encourage you to do this, please, after our service is done, read the Passion History Click on the link, read it with your family. You'll see that it has a breakdown on how you can read that responsibly. You can do that with your family where it says men. Um, you can have the, the, the boys say it with their father. And where it says women, have a mother with their daughters. And do that responsibly. And then pick one of you to be the leader. And you could even have a couple of the kids be the congregation if you wanted to break it up. But enjoy that as you read it as a family and meditate on all the things Jesus did on the days before he died. Our sermon text for tonight, and our, our meditation for our devotion tonight, comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 38. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this he went out again to the Jews, gathered there, and said, I find no basis for a charge against him.
That section comes from right in the middle of Jesus' trial by Pilate before the crowd. The crowd that, you know, a couple days before had paraded his entrance into Jerusalem and said, Hosanna to the King of King of King, the blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they were waving palm branches and they laid down their coats and they were just so excited that Jesus was here. They were so excited about the movement that he had created. They were so excited about the miracles he could do, the power that he displayed and the authority by which he preached. But only a few days later, as everything seemed to be falling apart around him, as the leaders obviously didn't like Jesus, and more and more got on this bandwagon of turning against him because Jesus kept portraying himself as weak and willing to suffer, and that he was going to his death, there were so many people that abandoned him. And eventually, he got so alone that even his disciples abandoned him. And now that crowd that just a couple days ago were behind him, now are yelling, crucify him. And Pilate's in the middle of this. He's a Gentile, he's not a Jew, he's a Roman soldier who has seen so much, he's seen a lot of war, and he's all about power and influence, and he wants to keep moving up. He's in Judea for now, but he's hoping for a better assignment soon. He doesn't really care about what the Jews care about, he doesn't care about their God. He's sick of hearing their story of history, and Pilate's probably sick of hearing a little bit of the the God complex that Rome and the emperor has too, that he's just fed up with hearing truth from everybody. And he pulls Jesus aside. He sees that this man doesn't even defend himself, but he says that he's the truth, that he is a king, a king of the Jews, and yet a king that doesn't defend himself, a king that doesn't stand up and, and get his followers rallied behind him so he can lead a revolution. Instead, he just willingly allows them to accuse him. He willingly allows himself to be put on trial for crucifixion. And Pilate, in the face of this, calls out, what is truth? How can anyone know? This trial is a sham, and you're not doing anything about it, and how am I supposed to know what is right and what is wrong. You say you have the truth, you are the truth, and, and you are truly this king. How do I know if that's true? That's that situation. But today, are you asking a similar question, what is truth? I find myself asking that question constantly in these days, especially these last couple weeks. And not just, in, um, not just in the context of the current epidemic, but just in general. We're constantly asking, what is truth? Do we trust the media? Do we trust what we are being told by the government? Do we trust everything that we hear about on Facebook? Do we trust what our friend says about what's going on? Who do we trust? Where do we go? How do we know what is truth? That's a tough question to answer. Um, and so we understand Pilate's frustration as we hear so many voices all around us all the time. How do we know what truth actually is? What's actually going on? Who has the facts? Who's going to get us through this? How are we going to be okay? Truth is hard to find. It really is. And it's really hard to know when, you, when you're hearing the truth and it's coming from a true voice. Because there's only one person who always speaks truth. That was the man that Pilate was, had on trial that day. It was Jesus Christ who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Have you guys ever used a compass? I love compasses because I love thinking of everything in directions. North, south, east, west. If you tell me go to this place, it's northeast from here, I'll find it. You tell Steph that, my wife, or many others, it means nothing to them. 
Steph gets frustrated at me when I say to her, um, you just got to head north and you'll find it. And she's like, well, that doesn't mean anything to me. But for me, that's all I need. You give me a compass and you say, go this way and I'll be able to find it. Because a compass is meant to tune in to north. So even if you're in the middle of the forest, you can't see anything, you have no idea where to go, that compass will lead you north, or whichever other direction you want to go. Consider for a moment with me that Jesus is that compass for you. Pilate didn't know who, who he had in front of him. Sadly. He got the feeling that this man was more than what he seemed, that he was different, because no matter what he did, no matter what he urged him to do, like defend yourself, he refused to do it. Jesus wasn't like anyone else. He wasn't just telling you what you wanted to hear. He wasn't lying to you to make you feel better or to make you crazy and scared and panicked. He just spoke the truth always, whether people loved him or hated him. He always spoke with authority. Why? Because he was speaking the words of God. And he knew his father intimately, so he knew exactly what God meant by every single word in the Bible. That's why Jesus rattled people so much, because he was different in that he always spoke the truth. And he always did that in love even if it came out hard and it was difficult for many people. The beauty of Jesus is he is truth. He must speak truth, and he doesn't sin. Jesus doesn't make mistakes and say one thing, but he meant something else. And he also knows the people he's talking to. He knows you. He knows exactly what you need to hear and just how to say it so that it makes sense for you. And on top of that, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, takes God's word, takes Jesus' word, and he gives it to you in a way that it does teach you truth, in a way that no one else can. And that same truth, Jesus made his truth, that he was holy, that he was righteous, that he was always right with the Father, he made those truths true of you too. And how did he do that? He did that by suffering and dying for you. The truth suffered and died so that his truth, who he is, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the Messiah, could be you. As he lives in you and gives you his righteousness, he gives you the truth of your redemption, the truth that you have a Heavenly Father who loves you, the truth that you are forgiven through His blood. That's how Jesus becomes our compass. If you know Jesus from the pages of Scripture, you know the things He says, you know that He doesn't act or speak like anyone else. And the more you know Him and the more you rely on His Word, yes, even now, when you are confused and disoriented and you don't know what's going on and you're stuck at home and you don't know how long this is going to last, all the things that are crazy and sending you in a spiral, you can focus in on Jesus by studying His Word, by nitpicking everything He does. Test Him. Test everything He says. Is it true? Is it true about you? Yes, the bad stuff, the sins you struggle with, and the desires that you have that aren't good, and you may get angry at him for saying that, but is he wrong? No. And the more you listen to him, the more you see the truth of his words, you see the, the hardship of God's law and what it tells you that you do wrong, but you also see that he says it because he loves you, that he never lies to you, and most importantly, he never lied to you about loving you and forgiving you again and again and again. I urge you, especially during times like today, in these last few weeks, that you return, return to your compass, the one who will lead you through this and always point you in the right direction and help you orient yourself. And as you wrestle with the information that you're getting, you know that this is true, that you have a Savior who loves you and who cares about you and who speaks truth to you and will continue to teach you to trust in God more and more who will never abandon you. 
That is the compass you need, and that compass will help you find your way through all of this. Pilate asks, what is truth? You may ask, what is truth? And a lot of the information we get, in all honesty, we don't know all of what is true about it. However, what we do know is true is Jesus and his love for us. What we do know is true is God's word and that it applies to us just as much as it did thousands of years ago. What we do know is true is that we are saved children of God through what Christ has done for us, the one who kept his mouth shut, who let himself suffer and die. Because he died and because he lives, the truth of our identity, the truth of our existence, is we are safe in him. Let that orient you as you sift through the rest and let it keep you steady, knowing that no matter what happens, you already are secure in your eternal standing before God and you will dwell in his house forever. Be at peace, friends. Know that you have the truth and if you don't know Jesus very well, someone who's watching this right now, I urge you, get to know Jesus because in him you will find the truth and that truth will help you with all the rest. Amen. At this time, I'd like to say a prayer. Um, one thing I mentioned last time, if you have a prayer request that is on your mind or something that I didn't mention or that you would like an answer from, from Scripture, does anything that you would like prayed for, um, you can leave that in a comment or send me a message. Um, I'd love to hear about that, and then I can pray for you and with you. Um, but with that, I will join in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that as our whole society has gone into chaos and, and free tail spinning in some ways, that you keep us oriented on our heavenly home. That you remind us that as, as many efforts as we put into place and as hard as we work together to make it through this virus and to keep it at bay as long as we can or at least keep hospital beds free for a longer period of time so that people can get the attention that they need, that for all those efforts, we know ultimately that you are the one who is in control. Let that give us some sense of peace. Uh, if we're feeling guilty that we didn't do enough soon enough, we didn't make the right decisions, or for the tough decisions still coming, and we don't necessarily know how we're going to keep our businesses going, our economy alive, and also protect lives and do what we can to do that. Um, give us the peace that only you can give by reminding us that you are in control, that ultimately our times are in your hands, and we need to rely on you. I'd also like to um, pray for all those who are sick, not only with the coronavirus, but for them, but also those who are sick in any other way and are seeking treatment, and it's getting more and more difficult um, to get that treatment quickly and efficiently. Um, be with them and take care of them. Um, watch over their lives and over their families who maybe can't be there right with them because of all of the restrictions that they also are leaning on you and the safety that they have in you. Um, we also pray for the medical professionals who are working around the clock and putting their lives at risk by being around all those who are sick and, and treating those who desperately need help. Thank you for them and give them the stamina and the strength to continue on helping those who desperately need it. We pray for not only the members of St. Paul, but all those here in our community in Clintonville, that you are with them, that you give them peace of mind, um, that you help keep them calm, and that you remind them of your grace and your love that will see them through this. But more than that, even beyond this, that you love them and forgive them, and you want them to know you as well. We pray that all of us may grow closer to you during this time and to our families. As we spend time safer at home, but spend time with you. In Jesus' name we pray these things, and we also join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We'll join together in our evening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. Forgive me all my sins, and graciously keep me this night. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. And receive the Lord's blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. That will conclude our service portion of our service tonight. Again, if you didn't get it already, please check out the Passion History and read it with your family. That way you're meditating on the things that we'd be purposely trying to dwell on as much as possible as we think about um, Holy Week and the events that happened then when Jesus died on that cross and just all the events that happened around that time. That's the beauty of Lent is we get a chance to really think about all those things and just how much Jesus did for us. But thank you so much for tuning in. Um, any comments that are listed that I should respond to right away? Well, Otherwise, may you have a blessed evening, and please tune in on Sunday. Um, I'd love to have you join us for our worship service as well. Um, you'll be able to find that on Facebook posted and also um, Sunday at 9. On our website. Yes, Sunday at 9. Thank you. So Sunday at 9, our worship service will be posted. We'd love to see you there. And God bless your evening. Um, see you soon.